Today we're going to cover frequently asked questions about ICF construction. So if you don't already know, ICF stands for insulated concrete forms. Now we just filmed a video on basically on what is ICF and we cover, try to cover as much and, and as many elements as possible as the whole system. So it takes quite a bit of explanation. So this one's just specifically questions that we get all the time. And you know, I often wonder and think to myself, why didn't I film this a long time ago? Because these are questions we get every day. What type of construction can you use it for? Well, typically ICF is known for basements. And if you know anyone that has an ICF basement, they'll be like, oh, it's so comfy. It's cool in the summer. It's, it's just cozy all the time because there's no air leakage and it's lots of insulation. But what people for they, they kind of stop, they hit their brain cap right there. And they don't realize that you can just do ICF and just keep going to another floor and take it to the roof. We've been doing ICF to the roof since 2012. So over a decade now. Other buildings that you can use it for, multi-story. You can use it for commercial. We just finished one a year ago. You can do simple or complex structures. So we've done both houses where you have just a simple square box. You have another that might have a few jogs, and then we have ones that are very complicated, multi-story, multi-corners, corner windows, big openings, all that. You can use it for shops. And another feature I like is you can actually, there's a systems that you can incorporate a structural slab, kind of like a parkade. So you could have a garage and you could drive in underneath that garage and, or you could have a theater room under your garage or anything like that. So it's all incorporated because you're building with concrete and you can design it any way you want and you always have a structural integrity in there. So don't forget, you can always go higher and the benefits are unbelievable and we won't even be able to cover them all today. So another question I get is, do I need to frame additional walls on the inside? No, you do not. And that leads us into the next one. The reason you don't need to frame additional walls is because these these are called I call them they're either called snap ties or ties so these ties or some people refer to them as webs they're every eight inches so this is what's incorporated into the block that withstands the force of concrete while you're pouring it it's all engineered it's amazing how it can hold tens of thousands of pounds of concrete not blow to smithereens so you can see that here is an indication of where a tie is so that later you know where to attach to. Now here I've actually gone and stripped it off, stripped some of the foam off, but these ties are an inch and a quarter wide and they sit about a half an inch below the surface. See there? And those are your attachment points. And there's full, they've engineered all this stuff. There's engineering on nails, how much pressure they hold, screws, all that stuff. So you can quite literally fasten anything to this. And if you're on a house, you don't need to vapor barrier anything. You have to be vapor barrier your ceiling and tie it into the wall. But beyond that, you can just go ahead and just attach your drywall straight to this, right? You just screw right into it. So it's not that hard. And, and that's the point of the video is knowing these simple, answering these simple questions will help open up your mind to being like, oh man, this is all well, the ingenuity behind this system is unbelievable because it, there's so many things it covers. Sometimes almost, I say is it's almost so simple that it's over people's heads. Like they think that it needs to be more complicated than it is. Okay. I don't know if I mentioned this. You can attach drywall, plywood, final siding, stucco, hardy plank, engineered wood, anything to these buildings. So another big question is electrical. Well, how do you do electrical? Well, there's a couple ways. Um, a lot of the electricians that I've worked with don't charge any extra money to do it. They... Essentially, I've seen guys do it quite often with an electric chainsaw and through the end there's that little hole You just run a bolt there and you you can just cut through the foam and you make the get you gouge out for where your wire goes I the most recent electrician used a router and he just freehanded a router Went wherever he wanted to you stuff the wires into the track you cut out where your boxes are you can screw the box to the tie you can concrete screw it to the back. Some boxes actually have wings that flare out and actually cut and grip into the foam. So not to get too in depth, but the electrical isn't as hard as you think. 
you know, maybe rather than going horizontal all the time, you can go vertical. It doesn't matter. Um, when you're at the top wall or the top connection where your truss is, you got to drill through the top plate. The top plate's structural to hold the trusses down or the roof. You just drill through that and up into the attic and you're freewheeling, right? So it's not that it's, it's just different. It's not that it's any more complicated. No matter what, in a stud house, you got to drill thousands of holes. It's a pain in the butt no matter what. You got to gouge some foam, stuff the wire in, spray foam it afterwards. We did, on the commercial job we did, they actually, on the spec sheet is they wanted conduits for future in the walls. So the electricians were a little more rugged on cutting out. They cut out way too much foam, but it didn't matter. It didn't, it doesn't affect the integrity. It doesn't affect the R value or the air tightness of the building. So they have these extra big gouges and we just spray foamed it after, rasped it flush, ready for drywall. Plumbing is another topic that we get and questions all the time. You don't typically have a whole bunch of plumbing in your outside walls. Typically the most common place probably on every job is you're venting for one of your sinks. Usually your kitchen sink ends up on the wall because it's always below a window or that's typical, right? So you have the venting pipe, which is, you know, in our area, inch and a half ABS. You just gouge out the foam. You do your vent stack in there, um, spray foam afterward, cut it flush. As long as it's below the surface, you're ready for drywall again. Now in the floors, rather than you, like you could run the drain down, but it's more difficult like running it in the foam. We usually just have a, your drain pipe coming up through the floor, whether that's concrete floor or the wood uh, joist package. And then same with your water lines, water lines just come through the floor. So instead of coming up and over, they just through the floor. It's not that hard, right? No. The other thing I get, well, aren't like those walls are just so crooked and wavy. And it's like, I don't know where people are getting this idea from. If you do what you're told to do and how to install the system, your walls are straight as an arrow because you have all your bracing, you have stiffener that goes inside, which helps keep it straight. Uh, you run a string line before you pour your concrete. And when you pour, then you lean your walls into your string and they're perfectly straight. So there's no waviness, right? You might sometimes, I guess where's a good example. Sometimes you'll get a little bulge where this factory joint is, it'll bulge out slightly. You might get the odd one, just an eighth of an inch or so. You can rasp those flush, doesn't matter, right? You could have a half inch bulge and you still wouldn't come and affect the, the ties. You could rasp it off, but that, that's very rare. Another, this is actually a big question is cost. Now it's not how much does it cost? It's always how much more is it than a, a two by six or conventional building. You can weigh the costs, but if you also weigh the characteristics and the advantages. Now, in my experience, if you're building a full house, ICF's about 5% more. Because it's really only the walls above the foundation that are ICF, and they're the only the exterior walls. Everything else is the same. You still need a floor, you still need a kitchen, you still need bathrooms. So the overall average price is about 5% more in a full house, right? So when you compare the characteristics, it's not 5% better insulation. It's not 5% more airtight. Those numbers are substantially more. So we'll get into those quickly too. Um, if you're building a shop, then you're probably around that 20% more to do an ICF shop than a wood frame shop or a pole shed. Because now you don't have all those other costs with building a house that average the price down. You have what's a shop, a floor and walls and a roof, right? So that's why it's more, so. And still at that time, then you can weigh like 20%. Yeah, okay, well then I will go wood frame, like, right? And other people, we just built one for a guy that we built him a house three years ago and now we built him an ICF shop. And even though we're not done, he's blown away. We don't even have overhead doors on and we're heating it in the middle of the winter and it, the heat's up like that. And he's like, how does it do it so fast? I got tarps on my doors. Another question that I get is like, I can't, I can't attach my kitchen cabinets to this. And it's like, okay, well <laughs> they're every eight inches. So it's like having a stud wall house, but the twice as many studs. Now I've heard of guys, I've never personally done it. I never had to, but you, you could route, take 
router half inch depth and router out the section that you want to fasten your cabinets to and install half inch plywood, which then would be flush with the foam. You could do that if you're really paranoid, but these hold just fine. I've been doing it for over 10 years. All right. So I hope I covered everything today. And if not, just send me a comment and I'll answer it. And that'll be a good dialogue for us to have and answer more questions. And until then, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> How cocky do I get? <laughs> well. I'm going to be a little more blunt than I would yeah. normally be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this hat gob. <laughs> I, I like that question. Well. We've had guys do parging. And we're like, okay, the ties are every eight inches. We found them at each corner, which is the hardest. Okay, here's your first one. They're every eight inches. And they come back and they're like, we can't figure it out. I'm like, oh my God, dude, like it's every eight inches. Just, but right, everyone's used to wood. <laughs> Just smash it on, right?